Hi, I'm Calvin Perry with the University of Georgia's Stripland Irrigation Research Park. And I'll be presenting results from a study on cotton irrigation entitled Cotton Irrigation Scheduling Methods, Which Method is a Best Fit? My co-authors on this paper are Dr. Wes Porter and Dr. John Snyder, both also with the University of Georgia. A little background first, uh, irrigation scheduling is de determining how much water and when to apply irrigation to a crop to maximize water use efficiency without reducing crop yield or on-farm profitability. You may know that cotton is a difficult crop to adequately determine an appropriate irrigation scheduling strategy for. Many studies have shown positive effects on cotton growth and biomass development, yet negative effects on final yield when excessive irrigation is applied. And cotton is a crop that responds positively to well time periods of stress during the production season. Our producers have many options available to them for the purpose of scheduling irrigation and crop production. These irrigation scheduling methods range from the free to inexpensive to a perceived high expense cost. Each scheduling method comes with an associated time required to make decisions from these methods as they get increasingly complex. Now, this table here shows a set of data from the USDA NASS survey. And you'll notice for Georgia that 87% of our growers are still using visible stress to determine when to irrigate or 27% feeling the soil to determine when to irrigate. So not very scientific methods uh, of scheduling irrigation. In addition to the negative yield penalties for over irrigating cotton, it can become very expensive to pump irrigation water. So while Georgia row crop irrigation, excuse me, agricultural regions do not have a per gallon cost for assessing irrigation water, there is an associated energy cost with moving that water from source to crop. Our UGA extension enterprise budgets estimate these costs at approximately $7 per acre inch applied for an electric pump source, up to $12 per acre inch for a diesel energy source. And they often combine that into an average cost of $8.50 per acre inch applied. To look at it another way, if a farmer applied just two one inch irrigation supplied irrigation events costing $14 per acre, that would be about $1,400 on a 100 acre field for that two one inch applications. The main objective of this study was to research various irrigation scheduling strategies on cotton. In addition, the sub objectives were to monitor soil moisture and determine optimal irrigation scheduling times for each method, to log the total and the distribution of rainfall and irrigation for each scheduling method, and determine the effect of irrigation scheduling method on final crop yield and resulting irrigation water use efficiency. So here's how we did the study. A randomized block trial was implemented under a lateral move irrigation system equipped with a variable rate controller, allowing plots of eight rows wide by 42 feet long at my facility, the UGA Stripland Irrigation Research Park near Camilla, Georgia. The irrigation treatments implemented were soil water tension of 45 kilopascals, which would be optimal in our sandy loam soils. A soil water tension of 20 kilopascals, which would be a, a very wet condition. A soil water tension of 75 kilopascals, which would be letting that soil get very dry. The USDA ARS Irrigator Pro expert system, which uses soil water tension. 
the CropEx sensor system, Valley Irrigation's scheduling tool, which also uses a sensor, the UGA Smart Irrigation app, which uses weather data only, the UGA checkbook method, which uses this graph as shown here, which is the weekly crop water use requirement. And finally, a dry land or rain fed uh, treatment, which is technically not irrigated. However, as you'll see, we do irrigate it just a bit to get the crop germinated and progressing. So a few photos very quickly of our irrigation system. You see different zones being irrigated in this photo. This photo uh, shows the same as well as this one. This is cotton being irrigated at our facility. So soil water tension irrigation triggers uh, were accomplished by using a probe with three watermark sensors installed at four, eight, and 12 inches uh, installed in two of the three reps of all treatments. Uh, the output from each of these watermarks is in kilopascals. The soil water tension readings from this probe was used to schedule irrigation for the 20, 45, and 70 kilopascal treatments. By using a weighted average of the sensor depths as applied to the three depth averages of the two probes, for the days after planting as shown here. In days one through 30, you see the weighting we did was 60% shallow depth, 30% deeper depth, and 10% of the deepest depth. And then you see the additional two days after planting intervals, how we weighted. As you see in the later stage, we weighted the shallow depth a little less, the medium depth a little more, and the deepest depth even uh, more than we did at the beginning of the season. And then irrigation was terminated once the field uh, average reached 10% open bowl. These photos show uh, an example of our soil moisture sensor that was using the watermark probes as the device in the left photo with the green cable coming from it. You see how we fashion it into a probe. And then the right photo shows us installing that in the very young cotton. Here we see the CropEx probe being installed. Uh, a pilot hole is drilled and then that probe is literally uh, augered into the soil till that cap is at soil level. And here is the valley irrigation system uh, where you uh, have a hard time seeing the sensor, it's down in the soil, but here is what you see above ground. So the results of this study are shown in this table. You see the irrigation in the first column for each of these methods. As I mentioned, the rain fed or dry land treatment also was irrigated in this case, two times at 0.5 each. And then you see the rest of the treatments, how much irrigation uh, was applied to each of those based on when that method triggered an irrigation event. You'll notice that the checkbook method had the most irrigation applied. It does not take into account anything other than rainfall, doesn't look at crop growth stage. It doesn't look at uh, cloudy conditions, example, for example. So it had the most irrigation applied. We follow that method uh, very closely for these studies. You'll notice the 75 kilopascals of the irrigated treatments, it had the least irrigation water applied as it was intentionally keeping the soil very dry. We did have quite a bit of rainfall last year. 2020's rainfall during this cotton growing season was 21.36 inches. So that would be considered a wet year. And you can see the resulting yields um, from these different methods. And the, all the irrigated methods uh, 
responded very well and it had very good yields. The dry land slash rain fed method you see yielded considerably less, even though it was a wet year, which leads to the observation that in most years we don't always get the rainfall when we need it. It occurs uh, sometimes when it doesn't do the most uh, good for that plant. The next column, irrigation water use efficiency, is the pounds of lint divided by the inches of water applied by irrigation. So you see the different irrigation water use efficiencies uh, in the column. You'll notice the valley scheduler and the 20 kilopascal soil water tension have lower water use efficiencies because they did have more irrigation applied, as did the checkbook method. The last two columns are a simple what we call an engineering profit calculation, where we took the UGA extension cost factor for that irrigation in acre inches and applied uh, a value of 79 cent cotton, uh, that's per pound, to this calculation. And you can see what the profits were calculated for a $7 electric energy calculated profit versus a $12 diesel calculated profit. And you can see in this simple profit calculation, we were pretty profitable in most everything except the uh, dry land rain fed. We did have some variability as you can see in the profit for these. We also had plotted the irrigation amounts by each method, along with the rainfall at the bottom of this graph. You can see we had uh, intervals where we did have some rain events, and then we had intervals where we didn't have any at all, and you see the corresponding uh, irrigation events there. You see we had many more events with the UGA checkbook, which again did not have sensors. It was uh, determining moisture in the soil. Uh, and you see the other methods, how they applied irrigation in, in different time, at different times during that growing se season, corresponding to those periods of time where we didn't uh, receive any rainfall. So to wrap up, we had basically eight irrigation scheduling treatments and a rain fed treatment. They were tested for their effects on cotton crop yield and irrigation water use efficiency. Uh, the 2020 production season, because of the amount that was received, would be classified as a wet season, had over 20 inches of rainfall. But as I mentioned, there were periods that irrigation was required to maximize yield because we did have periods where there wasn't uh, rain occurring. Uh, the dry land yields were well under a thousand pounds, well under two bales per acre. There were no significant differences between yields for the irrigation scheduling treatments, but there was between irrigated and rain fed. And there were numeric differences in irrigation water use efficiency and profitability. The 45 kilopascal treatment did not have the highest irrigation water use efficiency, but had the highest profit. It was the soil moisture for that treatment kept, uh, was kept at an optimal level for production of cotton in our sandy soils. But note that the addition of another 2.25 inches of irrigation didn't have an impact on yield, but reduced profitability by about $30 per acre. And that's comparing the 45 versus the 20 soil water tension uh, kilopascal treatments. Additionally, our UGA Smart Irrigation app, the Irrigator Pro and Valley Scheduler treatments all had high profits, but the Valley scheduling system did have a lower water use efficiency because it called for more irrigation water. 
It should be noted that the irrigation, excuse me, the engineering economics did not include the cost of system and management time, but are just for reference. And as you can see from these data, selecting the appropriate irrigation scheduling tool for a farm can be challenging, can be a daunting uh, experience, but it's a critical task if we're going to uh, ma maximize our crop yield while maximizing our water use efficiency. And with proper management and selecting significant excuse me, with proper management and selection, significant profitability is possible. And to wrap up, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the staff at Stripland Irrigation Research Park, a number of technical and student support, including Matt Groover, Mike Tucker, Cody Mathis, Chris Bowles, Cole Patterson, Seth Newell, and Seth Williams. And this study wouldn't have been possible without funding from the Georgia Cotton Commission, which made it possible. So with that, I'll finish by saying thank you for viewing this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Again, the co-authors are Wes Porter, myself, Calvin Perry, and John Snyder. And you see our contact information here on this slide. If you need any further information or like to follow up with us uh, with questions. So again, thank you for viewing this.